The Frituals, written and performed by author Caitlin Costello. Chapter 20 Shauna Philippe stands by and watches as I fight against the guards that force me through the camp. They parade me like a cow for judging, some calling out jeers. One dark one, an elf, who must have stood a foot taller than me, walks up and stops our procession. He just stares at me, pinning me down with his eyes. I flinch when he touches me. A single fingertip sliding along my jaw and down my neck before Damien gets tired and barks an order for him to stand down. I am brought to a large tent in the middle of the camp. They throw me into a sturdy wooden chair and begin to tie me down. I do manage to kick one of the guards in the mouth before he pulls the rope tight. He spits the blood and tooth in my face before completing the job and making sure that the knot is uncomfortably tight around my ankle. I wish you would listen, Philippe whispers in my ear, trying to brush a strand of hair from my face. I turn my face away. Right. Where would that have gotten me? In the exact same place. I snap, pulling against the ties around my limbs. She's right, of course, Damien says, pushing his way into the tent. But you, you promised. You told me you wouldn't hurt her, Philippe says like a petulant child. This sniveling man before me is not the man I agreed to marry. But I want, I need him to come back. I lied, Damien says simply. With a flick of his wrist, thin black bands wrap around my throat, ready to tighten in an instant. I freeze, feeling the oily coil slithering about my neck. They look just like the cords that had signaled the alarms that led to this situation. Why would you believe him? You are so stupid. Again, she is right. You are quite dull. You are useful to me, but not the smartest. The cord around my neck tightens slightly, making it a bit harder to breathe. The end grows until it stretches from my neck to Damien's hand like I am on a leash. He gives it a jerk, testing its strength. Get out, he says to Philippe. Shauna and I need some time to get to know each other. Philippe halts at the door like he's unsure what to do. My Philippe, the hothead who wouldn't care what anyone thought of our relationship, would have decked this elf. And Philippe just stands staring at me. Damien calls a few of his honchos to take him away. Their contact is all he needs, and he snaps out of it and begins fighting to get back at my side. I hear Philippe continuing to call for me for a few minutes after he's sent away. Why does he keep yelling, I wonder. He's just going to get himself hurt. I take this moment of silence to assess my situation. I am tied up to a chair. My bag is gone. Luckily, we had thought to give all of the books to Paulo so he could take the extra weight. My arms are going numb from the tight ropes holding my arms out. I am alone. Paulo is free. At least, as far as I know. And I have no way to find out. What are we thinking about up in here? Damien asks, leaning over and tapping my temple. I decide it is best not to answer him. Stubbornness will not help you. It will get you hurt. I look away, looking anywhere but him. I follow the line of the pole up to the center of the tent, where the fabric is held up. Following one of the folds of the fabric down, my eyes stop on a large map. The map is a detailed topography of the world. It shows all of the mountains and valleys and lakes... All across the surface, charcoal has been smudged to mark the rising power and control. I stare carefully at the details, memorizing as much as I can. All right, that's enough daydreaming. It's time for the two of us to talk, to get to know each other. Damien stands and waves his hand in a circle, muttering something under his breath. It starts as a tiny pinprick of darkness, but under his caresses it grows, sucking all of the light from the tent. Now, let's begin our little interview. Here's an easy one. What is your name? Shauna Flynn. I see no harm in telling something he already knows. What are you? Aka, in the common tongue. A black band weaves itself around my wrist, too tight for comfort. The water ritual, I say quickly, confused by the need for the common tongue and the anger that flashes in his eyes. 
Who is your family? He asks, toying with another black band. You already know the answer to that question, I say stiffly. He smiles, but there is no joy in it. You're right. I do. But I want you to tell me. Remember? We are friends. I have to hold back a laugh. We are anything but friends. Why should I trust you? The black band in his hand changes, melting into an inky black blade. Technically speaking, you shouldn't trust me. However, I feel like given the circumstances, you will answer my questions. And if I don't, I probe, trying to see just how far he is willing to go. He is ready to hurt me, I'm sure, but I also know he needs me. If you won't answer me, then I guess we will have to ask your father what to do. What? I say, pulling at the ties, attempting to get closer. The black disc begins shimmering. The ripples are changing, coalescing, until it starts to create the picture of my father. Father? Uh, how, how? I... Shauna? Shauna, are you okay? Tell me you're all right, he says, cutting me off. An unseen hand comes out of nowhere, cuffing my father. Shut it. Hey, do you have to do that? I say, ignoring the feeling of the blade pressing into my throat. Now will you answer my questions? Damien asks, pressing the blade into my throat a touch more. Do I have to answer that question? I mean, clearly you know who they are. I shouldn't have to tell you. I snap, glancing at my father inside the dark disc. Fine. We will simply move on to the next question. Queen Moraine performed the final ceremony to mark the beginning of your training. In doing so, she gave you these markings, correct? Well, I guess you saw me then and I didn't have them, and now I do, so what do you think? You don't know how to do a very good investigation, do you? A flash of anger goes across Damien's face, and then the blade is at my neck, pressing deeper into my throat. I feel the first drop of blood slide down my neck. You will tell me how she did it. Now, he orders. Telling the truth would be a lot easier. However, how much damage will the answer bring me in the end? I don't know, I say. Someone takes a blade out and places it against my father's temple. Jamie winces but makes no sound as his captors drag the blade down the side of his face. Look, stop. Please, stop. Why did you have to bring him into this? You didn't, ha even, you didn't even give me a chance before you began threatening me. I watched the blood pool in the cut and run down the side of his face. Would you have answered my questions if I had not threatened your father? Look, I'll speak to you if I know he is not harmed, all right? I snap. Then answer my questions. He throws a pointed look at the image and the blade sliding down Jamie's face moves away, but hovers over his skin. The tip is close, only an inch away from the artery in his neck. Damien gives me a look, and before the blade could creep back to his skin, I blurt out, Yes, she did the ceremony. She spoke these elven words. I don't know what she said. It, it sounded like an ancient dialect. I couldn't make out what she was saying. It's a lie, of course, but I have to use something. Damien isn't buying it. You mean with all those classes you have taken, and all the books you have read, you couldn't translate a single measly word for me, he asks. His voice almost sings song as he takes a finger and traces the delicate tattoo on my face. Come now. I know you are smarter than that. Well, I knew what Akka and Fritual meant, obviously, and a lot sounded familiar, but I couldn't quite get it. Not that fast. I was never very good at translations. He sneers, dropping his hand away from me in disgust. He looks from me to the image of my father, and with a wave of his hand, it is gone. The next instant, Damien is on me, his hand in my hair, pulling my head painfully to the side. Do you honestly expect me to believe that? Well, yes, I wince as his grip grows tighter. It is the truth. His lips press in a narrow line. Again, I wonder how much he is willing to hurt me. He has to be working for someone. But would that person care if I had been hurt? My instincts tell me no. He holds my gaze for another moment before swiping a blade from a table and sticking it straight into my arm. 
What? Wh why? I splutter in pain as blood runs down my wrist, pooling in my palm. This blade is a truth blade. After I make the first cut, it will cut you again every time you lie. The happy glint in his eye that gives me chills is back. A truth blade? Did I stutter? Anger making those terrifying eyes seem to burn. No, I... I just... Pain clutters my words. He grins. Let's begin. Did you understand what Moraine had said in the ceremony? I watched the blade, weighing out my options. Yes, I understood what she said to me, but I can't repeat enough of it for it to be helpful. We will see about that. He almost purrs. Next question. Where is your friend, the Earth Ritual? I don't know. Damien stares hard at the blade hovering above my skin, but it does not move. Hi everyone, I wanted to pop in and let you know, until all the stars are found, my newest book is now available for pre-order. This young adult science fiction novel will be published on March 6th, 2021. Click the link in the show notes to see where you can pick up the book today. While I have you here, I wanted to share the back matter of the book. Joining the Galactic Garrison was the best decision that Ada Gomez ever made for herself. Or so she thought. Orphaned with her brother Sarkis in the foster system, who she can't claim custody of, a guardian who is days from kicking her out, and no job, there is nothing left for her on planet Earth. The only thing going for her is that she has made it. After three years of work, Ada has qualified to begin training for the esteemed Special Operations Team on the Galactic Garrison Space Station. Joining the Spec Ops Division is a chance to start over, to make a name for herself. And if she plays her cards right, maybe Ada can get Sarkis back. But her journey is just beginning. Being in the Spec Ops isn't easy. It isn't supposed to be. Any sign of weakness must be squashed. Fear is the devil. And hesitation is worse than death. But some of the training doesn't add up. And any semblance of structure? It looks like Ada left that back on Earth. Ada and her team do their best to put the pieces together and figure out what exactly is going on and roll with the punches, both mentally and physically, to come out on top. Little do they know, the hardest test is yet to come. Because this year, everything is different. Until All the Stars Are Found, a young adult science fiction novel is now available for pre-order. Its publication date is March 6th, 2021. Hi everybody, this is Caitlin Costello, the author and narrator of The Frituals. If you've enjoyed this podcast so far, please leave a review or a rating where you listened. It really helps to get the podcast in front of more people. If you can't possibly wait for another episode of The Frituals, fear not, because the full audiobook is now available. A slew of stores, including Google Play, Apple, High Books, Scribd, Chirp, Kobo, Walmart, Audiobooks.com, and Nook Audiobooks. And it's being added to more stores every single day. It's also available at your local library, so if you request it from your library, they should be able to get it into their system fairly quickly. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. This has been a production of The Frituals, written and performed by Caitlin Costello. Text copyright. 2018 to Caitlin Costello, production copyright 2020 Caitlin Costello.